Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask Twill. I've gotten this question quite a few times over the last few months. When I'm setting up my Linux partitioning, what's the best way to do it? What's the most efficient way, the best way that's going to help me save my data for the long run? Now, I remember the first time that I set up a Linux distribution, everybody was telling me that I had to use a different partition for each section of the operating system. That's absolutely not true. If you've used any of the modern distributions, you know you don't have to do that. You can use the entire disk and not even have to have a swap partition anymore. You can just have the root drive and that's it. However, for saving your data long term, I found the best way to do it is to have a small root partition where you install all of your applications and then a home partition where you save all of your files. Whether or not you use a swap partition is entirely up to you, but I'm going to show you how to set up your root partition, a home partition and a small swap just in case you want to use it. As you may or may not have noticed, I'm using an Ubuntu Live CD, but a lot of the newer distributions have a graphical partition manager like this. So as you'll see here, the options that I've got are to erase and use the entire disk, and I've only got this one available, or I can specify my partitions manually. What I'm going to do is tell it to do it manually. If you have a different operating system like Windows installed, it might tell you to shrink it and use the remaining space. It can ask you if you want to replace an existing Linux system if you've got one installed. What I almost always do is I specify it partitions manually. If you'd like to see how to actually resize your Windows partition and install on the rest of the space, I've actually got a video on that already. It's in my Intro to Linux series. I will put an annotation in the lower left hand corner. But as you'll see here, we've got a bunch of partitions partitions, I don't really need any of this stuff, so I'm going to tell it to do a new partition table. I would not recommend doing this if you haven't backed up your data. This is on a virtual machine, I don't have anything to lose, so I'm just going to wipe it all out. See now all I've got is free space, so I will add a new partition. It's going to be a primary partition at the beginning of the hard drive, and I'm going to make it 10 gigabytes. 10240. Doesn't have to be that, it can be whatever size you want. I've noticed with a lot of distributions at least 5 gigabytes is good, 10 is a good minimum. Anything above that, it all depends on how many applications you're installing. 10 is definitely a good jumping off point. And you will set the mount point to be this forward slash, which is the root of the drive, the, the very top of the drive. The equivalent in Windows would be your C drive. As far as use as, you can pick any of these that you want to use. Some of the most common are the EXT partition systems. Uh, EXT4 being the newest, that's the one that I most commonly would use. I would definitely avoid using FAT16 or 32 on the root of your drive. I don't know if that'll even work. So I'm going to select EXT4. It's the most common one being used right now in new distributions. And hit OK. And you will see there, it created my 10 gigabyte root drive that's EXT4. For the free space that's remaining, I'm going to go ahead and click that and hit Add again. And this time, I'm going to give it 1024. That's one gigabyte. I'm going to make it a logical partition. Doesn't really matter if you want to do that or not, but I'm going to put it at the very end of the drive. This is just a personal preference for me, but I just like to have my swap separate, and I'm going to use it as swap area. You'll see it remove the mount point there because it doesn't need it. It doesn't mount the swap. When the system starts up, any Linux system, it looks for a swap partition and just grabs it. And there you go, you see we've got our ext4 partition, our swap partition, and free space here in the middle. So now what you'll do is you'll click the free space, click add again, make it another primary partition. You don't have to do that, I just prefer to do it. There is a limitation, you can only have four primary partitions on one physical drive. That's not going to be an issue here because we've got only two, but I'm going to take it primary, I'm going to use the entire of the remaining space, use the beginning or end, it's going to be the entire amount so it doesn't matter, beginning is fine make it ext4 like I did the other one. Again, you could do this however you want to do it, whatever partition style. I would almost not recommend using FAT16 or 32 again. You'll be able to see it in Windows, but you might have problems running your applications. So I'll select ext4, and I will take the mount point of slash home. Click OK, and there you have it. I've got my root drive, my home drive, and my swap. And basically installing it this way does something a little bit differently. It puts your home drive in this large section so you can fill it up with all of your files with all of your configurations and everything and whenever you go to install a new version of Linux be it Ubuntu, Fedora, whatever you want to do you can leave this home drive alone and format your root partition only that way your applications go away your version of Linux goes away but all of your files and settings stay safe that said I still recommend doing backups before you reinstall any operating system just in case something goes wrong but this does give you that option of not having to reformat that partition every time you install and losing all of that data. Well, I hope that clears up some troubles that people have been having creating a separate home partition when they install a version of Linux. If you already have that one big root partition that takes up the whole drive and you want to move to a separate home partition, there is a tutorial on psychocats.net that's very in-depth as far as doing it in Ubuntu. 
it actually requires resizing and moving all the data over, I believe. I will put a link to that in the doobly-doo, so if you have a chance, take a look at it. This will probably be the last Ask Twill episode for a little while. I'm going to be moving to distro reviews on Wednesdays. I've had so many people asking me to do reviews of whatever distro, and I think this will give me a chance to actually start using a lot more distros and become a lot more knowledgeable on these other things. That doesn't mean stop sending me questions, though, because I will still be doing Ask Twill, I just won't be doing it nearly as often. And I know I've said before, send me questions wherever you want to send them. I would recommend, though, that if you're going to submit a question, submit it in the comments because I get emailed for every single one of those and they stand out for me. If you send it to me directly in email, there's a chance it's going to get spam filtered and I'm going to miss it. If you submit it on Facebook, I'm not going to get any notification about it. And if you put it on Twitter, most of the time I still don't get notified about it. So if you do have any questions, feel free to submit them in the comments below. I do read every single comment and I try my best to reply to everyone as quickly as possible. But that's all for this episode of Ask Twill. If you haven't seen it yet, I post a new video on Monday, an intro to video editing using Caden Live. I will be doing an episode of Twill News on Friday, so make sure to check that out. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.